How are you doing? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. What about you? I'm fine. And I'm fine except for my finger. It's uh, swollen and uh, painful, but uh, yeah, nothing wow. serious. <laughs> I hope you get well soon. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so where are you now? Are you in, in Italy or where are you in this moment? Yeah, I'm, I'm in Italy. I live in Italy, I live uh, close to uh, Varese in north of Italy. And uh, yeah, I'm, you know, there. I, I actually, I moved a couple of months ago from the, another city where I was there. And um, yeah, now I came back from my uh, hometown. And uh, I'm, I'm happy because I met my, my old friends. And so it's great. Yeah, um, I move a lot in my life, but yeah. So now I, I'm I'm back to my you know to my original home. <laughs> yeah, and also, I think you have been touring a lot uh, during oh, the years. So, so you, oh yeah, I did that's a lot. <laughs> that much time to stay home. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, actually, the good things, for example, uh, sometimes when you have a family, is that if you are busy with tour then you come back you have a long time then you can stay and then you can enjoy family and and you know kids whatever and uh so this is the the, the good parts of 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 uh, my my jobs and, and i mean being musicians yeah <laughs> so let's uh, talk uh, about uh, the band of yorn because you are mm -hmm. the drummer in the band um you release an album last year over yes. the horizon, rather. Yes. And uh, uh, what can you tell about this album? And how was uh, your role in the um, making of the album? Uh, over the horizon, it's an album where Yarn almost write everything there. So all the songs came from him. And uh, what we used to normally, not only in Yarn, but in uh, almost every band where I play, that I got, you know, the ideas of the, the songs. And of course, I always prepare and arrange uh, drums lines and, and everything. And sometimes, of course, when I have, uh, you know, different idea, I'm, I'm always uh, be the first one. Then I say, hey, guys, I have something that, can you listen to it? And then I'm recording a little bit, you know, like a demo just to show up how it's going and um, and then we discussed you know and uh, it's the things that I always like not to be just just a drummer but be a part a part of a band so be and bring my my ideas and my uh, work in the in the in a band too uh, and most of the time it works well so I, I'm really happy about that yeah that's nice um how did you get to play in in a yarn band um i worked with uh with uh frontiers record for many years and uh, they always look for a for a musician to play and me and yarn we had a lot of uh connection between like like uh, the, the guitar player of yarn uh, talking about like yeah <laughs> uh, 12 14 years ago it was the same guitar player that was uh, he played with me with Udo and uh, with Udo and um, uh, he suggested me to 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 play with him and he said but at that time he has a problem with the other drummer because he was a best friend so you know sometimes it's just a matter of waiting and sometimes happens and uh, he called me up uh, uh, I was still in Udo and uh, I recorded the first. Uh, AV Rock Radio, the album with the covers, and he released it like three years later. So it was I when I when I when I got the album after three years, I said, "Oh wow, I did these songs. I completely forget it, <laughs> you know." And then after that, Yarn was really happy, and then we start working uh, together. He asked me to be to stay in the band. And then I did live on that road. I did uh, the second uh, um, Avery Rock Radio, uh, and uh, and then we did, of course, the the last one. And uh, yeah, so it's a good, really good team, a really good band. We we are uh, good friends and a lot of respect, a lot of fun, and play with them is really a huge pleasure. Yeah, it's great. Are you at the moment playing with other bands? 
Uh, no, actually, I stopped it after the COVID. Uh, many things happen. I change many things in my life, and I, I was forced to, of course, like like a lot of musicians, you know. And uh, so I'm now now I'm, for example, I'm I'm a, I have a regular job and I do the music in between. And uh, I was part last band I was part was Iron Allies with uh, David Reese on vocals and Herman Frank from Accept. And we did a great album uh, um, called uh, Blowed In, Blowed Out. It, it was released like two, uh, one and a half years ago. And unfortunately, you know, the time was, you know, not, not really good for re uh, releasing the album and go on tour because everything getting really expensive and uh, traveling and, you know, it's it's the the same problem that all bands have now. So stay around touring is getting really difficult, really expensive. And uh, so then I decide to say, okay, maybe it's better to stay with Yarn because Yarn now it's uh, it, you know it's he he loves to play, but he wants to do you know not so much so many shows. And um, for me, it's fine. It's perfect. It's perfect because I can, you know, I can dedicate just one one band, and and it's more easy for me to 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 do it. And uh, but I'm always open because because I I got a lot of uh, you know requests to play records or something, and I always do. I I love I love it. I, it was my life for 25 years. So. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. looking back to uh, when you get when you were playing in uh, UDO, how did you get to play? Oh well, <laughs> it was the connection uh, between musicians. I played in a in a cover band where the guitar player was the guitar player of UDO two years two years before, and then suddenly happens that the drummer of UDO left the band because he has a really bad situations five days before the tour. So I got a call from, from, from Igor, it was the guitar player. And he says, do you want to enjoy us? We have, we have a problem. We have five days uh, left and then we have to start the tour. So can you uh, learn in 26 songs and, and, and come with us? I said, of course I do. <laughs> yeah, I did it. And yeah, it was, it was interesting, <laughs> let's say, because I, uh, I I spent like like day and nights, you know, learning 26 songs and then and then it was my first huge job that I did, then I got. And uh so yeah, in um, work. <laughs> was it stressful uh, learning so many songs in a this small amount of time? Yeah, it, it was. It was at that time. Uh, of course, you know, I, I was a big fan of Accept too. So many songs were already in my mind. But, you know, listen to the songs and play the songs is a different thing. And uh, yeah, uh, it took me a little bit while. But yeah, I, I, I had my 20,000 papers with all notes and everything just to sign, you know, the parts and everything. But yeah, it, it was fine. It was really good and uh, really exciting in one side, you know, I, because I, I came from cover band before and uh, I had a, a band uh, called Age of Forever and there was a melodic hard rock before and I did two, three records, uh, but we never tour a lot. We never, because it was a small band. So when I got the UDO was the first uh, prof real professional uh, job that I got with music. Yeah, and after UDO, you became the the drummer of Primal Fear. Uh, how was... did you get in the band? How was that? <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it's the actually it's uh, for in in this case I mean in, in this business. It's always a matter of connection between musician, be, between you know uh, experience and and uh, uh, how you you are, are you playing? Many many things it has to work, and uh, we did a tour together, at Primal Fear UDO when I was in UDO, and we became a really good friends, everybody, and we had a really really good tour together. So. When they and of course they when they the the, the, the uh, Randy Black the drummer left the band they 
as uh, they call Achilles priestess before, uh, but then for um, you know um, problem of uh, traveling because he's Brazilian, and uh, so it was too expensive. So this they decided to say, okay, maybe it's better to looking for an European drummer too. And uh, at that time, I was in studio uh, recording the Voodoo Circle album where uh, Alex Byrot and Matt Sinner were part of a band. And during the recording, they asked me to enjoy Primal Fear. So then I I, I get in the in the in the Matt Sinner family where I, I was playing with Sinner, with Primal Fear, and Voodoo Circle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there is a lot of experience on on your shoulder. Um, what's the best thing to be in a metal band as a drummer? Well. Uh, I think uh, drummers, uh, we are the engine of the bands. Some somebody says that if the band has a good drummer, the eighty percent of the job is done. And we, I mean, in my side, I always try to be the guy that in the band try to um, make sure that everything is working. And. Uh, that's that's the things. I mean, uh, if you are good in your job, it's 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 easy. Um, and of course, when you play with good musician too, it's it's uh, uh, easier to to make everything work. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I was lucky because I always play with a really good bands, with really fantastic musicians, and and, and you know, good teams. Yeah, and it helps when every everyone is doing uh, his own job and uh, it works together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, how do you get ready before going on stage? Uh, before the show. Yes. Uh, I uh, yeah. Mm, I start not so long ago to uh, warm up a little bit, you know, with my pratic pad and uh, you know make all the moves of the wrist and whatever fingers. Uh, depends of the music that I'm playing. If I have to play classic rock so where I'm not that busy to play I'm even don't make anything and I get you know uh, I make my warm-up with the two the first two songs but when I have to play for example with Primal Fear I always spend half an hour to before the show to to warm up and practicing a little bit just to get you know in the right shape for the show play two hours of power metal it's really physical and um and uh, of course, uh, when you get it, you know, when you are not 20 anymore, so <laughs> you need to be a little bit, you know, uh, yeah. prepare. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's the things. I mean, I think every, every, mus every drummer is talking about, of course, my instrument. Uh, we are used to, to, uh, to warm up with, you know, drumsticks and pratic pads just you know to don't annoy anybody leave the leave the, the rooms with another room and stay alone with the click and brrr, all the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's the, the the first thing that you do after the show the moment that you step out from the stage what happened after oh well it's also, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a matter of which, which kind of music I was playing before in, in, during the show. Uh, but when I play physical stuff like Primal Fear, I was, you know, sitting in the, in the, on the couch in the, in the, in the backstage and then drink something just to get relaxed for half an hour and then change my clothes and then, you know, get outside with fans. And then I always love to, to have a contact with fans and friends everywhere. Yeah. Uh, or sometimes when uh, when I had a good party with cover bands or something like that, when I have a lot of fun after the show, we start a party. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> drinks and everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know now now it's not about the music, but when I was uh, checking uh, uh, some information to come up with a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a fun fact. We share the birthday, but you are yeah, you, you the yeah twenty of February. Really? Oh yeah. really? Oh yeah. wow! Did you know that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was something fun too. But uh, you are nine years older than me. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. So <laughs> a bit more experience uh, in life and in uh, in the music uh, uh, overall. Oh yeah, a, a bit, a lot. Let's say right. because I, okay. I, I'm, I don't play. I played, but it never got in the way. But okay. I got to see concert, doing interviews, taking photos. So I'm in the in the com community, but uh, not as a musician. <laughs> okay, okay. But maybe in the future, you never know. <laughs> yeah, well, so life, you know, sometimes life make a lot of surprises. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Um, how do you, do you think uh, uh, the metal community in Italy is different from the metal community in other countries. So what are the main differences? And what is the country that you feel is the best for the metal music at the moment? Uh, well, it's, it's uh, after the COVID, many things change. And uh, I went to see a couple of festival as a guest. And um, in Italy, for example, I, I'm uh, I'm a friend of of the guy that is uh, doing Lupulo Rock in uh, Cremona, and I played there many times, twice with Jorn and Primal Fear. Um, what I saw is that Italy is really I never understood I never understood really because actually Italians love melodies. And, and you know that kind of music, pop music, or 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 um, um, as called, um, yeah, let's say pop music. But then when they listen to metal, they really love death metal or really you know extreme metal. And then they said, "Wow, I mean, I don't understand the things." You know, in Germany, for example, they love more. They, I mean, the culture of of music is completely different compared. Uh, the Italian one, and um, they they love even the classic metal. They love you know the Rammstein, for example. It is a different music or power metal. All, all music, all metal in general. It's it's uh, it's really good in in Germany. In Italy, some some music is not really. I mean, if you think about hard rock, not many bands touring in Italy, for example. The, no. Not many. People uh, listen to hard rock not anymore, and, and it's a shame. There is there are a lot of great bands, and uh, and uh, yeah, that's the things. I mean, in Italy, of course, we have a lot of great bands too. Italian bands play even hard rock than heavy metal or whatever. So, but yeah, it's different. It's a difficult uh, business in Italy, to be honest. I never been to Italy too with my music. Yeah, uh, I was lucky. Then I was working in in, um, in Germany, whatever, in in the states or in, in Norway, whatever. But but in Italy, you know, find find a a, a, a really good band and is touring, is making albums, and it's difficult. No labels, no no. Actually, even the fans are not that much. So I, that's what you know. I feel that in Italy. Uh, when someone define himself herself metal head, they are quite critical about bands and musicians in general. And uh, if uh, there is a post on on Facebook uh, in some of those um, metal rock pages, people are mean. <laughs> I mean, they they comment in a way that what are you? writing why if you don't like you don't need to to write anything you can skip it i know yeah yeah they I are like like, like I remember, writing oh yeah i remember it, it, it that's the perfect example then i was when i start with udo uh i find a lot of comments of uh people tells you know oh uh, uh, I think Francesco pay for play with Udo, or, you know, really jealous people, really. And I said, what? <laughs> yeah, Italy. In Italy, we are, you know, we love to judge everybody. 
Yeah, and there's always uh, the thing I like. Yeah, yeah, because they always think to be better than you, and uh, they don't accept. They don't, you know, they don't enjoy the things. I think that's what I think. I mean, we are always in the huge competition each other, and this is really. I don't get it. I mean, uh, there is a space for everybody. And uh, of course, if I don't like something, there are billions of bands that I don't like it, but I don't go on, on website to, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that. I don't care. So just don't listen to. Yeah. You know, that's that's what I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's, uh, it's And then with social media, I think that the people feel like they're, they are entitled to write whatever they want. They yeah, are, exactly. They, they, they get brave. Yeah, exactly. When yeah. They, they are under under the the screen. Yeah, it is it, exactly the same people were in the bar talking about bad things, but that things stay in the bar. Now, now they, they go on, on Facebook where it's on social media, whatever, to write the things, then everybody in the world can read it. And uh, and this is a different thing because the stupid of the 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 pub is stay in the pub. The stupid in Facebook, it's everybody can check it, and then they, and yeah. everybody can say something. That's really you know, that's the bad things of social media. Yeah. Then everybody, anybody can can talk and say something. True. True. Uh, what gear do you use? Uh, I mean, uh, what is what is your uh, drum kit? Uh, I'm endorser uh, Tama uh, for almost 20 years and Zildjian too. Like, like uh, it's this, almost the same set that Lars Ulrich from Metallica used uh, for many years and uh, never disappointed. It's the, for me one of the best and I, they always support me everywhere in, in around the world, um, in the studio, live, and never, never ever had a problem with that, never. And I will never, I think even if I got, you know, a, a, a good contract with different company, I will never change it. It's just because I'm so thankful that that in all these years, everything works so well, then I'm so proud uh, because they really treat me, re I mean, they really uh, give me everything needs, you know, for, to make my job uh, better in my yeah. uh, career. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah. I'm 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 lucky because I was one of the last drummer uh, that Tama, for example, took in the in the build together uh, together with big names like uh, like Simon Phillips, for example, Lars Ulrich, and uh, they they always uh, uh, for example when I uh, went to Japan to play, they always came there to, to to see the show and talk to me about drums, about what I'm thinking about, blah, blah, blah. So it's, wow, it's uh, it's really good feeling to be part of, of a company, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, when did you start to play drum? Uh, I was uh, 13 and uh, actually I, I start late. But because I actually started playing guitar before, I mean, when I was I was kids, you know, money, my family was not a, a rich family, so it was difficult to buy a drums. And uh, in in my area, not so many people play drums, so I didn't have the chance to play a real drums, you know, before yeah. I I can you know tell talk to my father, please buy me a, a drums so but i was lucky because um at the menu school uh i got um a teacher a music teacher then it was really uh, really a really nice person and uh he talked talked to my father and said please said take a drum for him because he's it's really good on it and uh so my father okay after a couple of this hey, okay we have to spend some money but then we did it I mean, he did it. He, it paid for my first drum kit. It was really, you know, a cheap one. <laughs> but I grown up. Uh, I was spending all my my uh, life at that time playing, playing a lot. I never actually. I never went to to teacher. I teach. I did. I learned drums by myself. Okay. And 
Yeah, and uh, I was spending when you know when uh, my friends went out for you know to go to the pub or you know just to have a fun. I was in my Rios's room playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's uh, the story. When when you love something, uh, you just yeah. you you are all the time focused on that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If I have to count in how many hours I spend with music and how much I got for that. <laughs> so, well, but yeah, passion is the, the first things, of course. I mean, this is, for me, music is art. And uh, what actually today in our days, the, uh, most of people forget is just business. And uh, this is not the right things. That's why music, it's not important anymore like it was before like uh you know selling albums and nobody from if uh, i uh for example uh if a band change uh change somebody in a band change an element in the band on uh, uh not so many people knows that that happens because nobody's gonna buy and buy cds or something they have a booklet where you can see who's who is playing you know and now it's with with Spotify, with all this media. And, and, yeah, you know. everything is different now. And uh, <laughs> now it's is just uh, put a song on Spotify, fast, fast, fast. So uh, I see when... some bands that are doing like uh, all the time, like uh, a new song come out, and then there is the album and then uh, new songs uh, and uh, in a, in less than one year another album and i i don't know i don't know i think it's maybe too much yeah yeah absolutely I, I don't but, you know, know. when you when you have to when you spend 10 euros to get your account in uh, in spotify and you can listen to every single song this was releasing <laughs> under years i mean this is really bad for music it's like yeah. even Netflix, you know, it, all the all the these uh, these things destroy completely the business. Even for us, I mean, now it's it's like not like it was before in the eighties or in the nineties, where you had a good money to make a good album, stay in the studio for you know months and not days. I I always I'm used to recording in albums one or two days, and before it was you know taking a month or something like that and spending and then you have even the time to thinking oh maybe these songs after you know recording the songs then maybe step up with another one and uh and then you have a time because your brain is getting fresh to listen again to the, the songs than you did before and then say oh, oh wow i can change the part now here because i listened to it and something is, is different and now it's not possible anymore. Now you have you have no time. You have no budget. Everything and, needs and to be fast. Exactly. Like a, exactly. Uh, exactly. And that's what for me it's uh it's like you know to ask a painter to make to make uh, a paint in one day. And I don't think somebody can go to Van Gogh and ask him, can you make me a paint for in one day for 200 euros? <laughs> <laughs> it's is the things. Yeah, uh, but but it's I think it's also musician fault because we always accept you know to do it and nobody nobody we always um, um, said oh it's not right uh, it's difficult but then we always accept it because it's the it's the business that's going on and there is something that you have to do to just to you know to survive and to to make your music and it's getting difficult really yeah. difficult yeah. I see. So let's talk about uh, metal in general. Uh, um, how did you get into metal music? When did you start to listen to it? Oh, listen to metal music when I was kids because my father actually it's also into that music. I didn't. He never play anything, but uh, he was a huge fan of Black Sabbath. You know, Rainbow, all the seventies, uh, and I spent all my life listening to. You know this kind of music, and actually, it's my favorite music. I, I'm I'm more into hard rock than, to be honest, to heavy metal. But then, of course, when I got the job with UDO, and then it was a classic metal. Actually, UDO, it's it was at that time kind of uh, let's say ACDC style, more heavy. 
So, and, but then, and then I start, when I start with Primal Fear, I have to change a lot of things and learn a lot of playing, different playing, because I, I always play double bass drum, but not that fast. So it took me a little bit while to, to get in. But yeah, so then you know, at the end, music is music. And when it's hard, uh, hard rock or metal or power metal, it's just a matter of, you know, speed or something like that. The style is always mine. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite band, if you have one? Oh, I have more. I have a lot, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Wisenake. I love Black Sabbath. I love uh, Rainbow, uh, Ronnie James Dio, you know, all these bands then in the in the past they make the story of of rock and music of Led Zeppelin the purple of course yeah if lap or even bands where the drummer are I mean I was always huge fan more of the band in general than than for the drummer than I was playing in in and, and of course 90 percent of the band I was listening to they had a great drummer too so I was yeah. like <laughs> What's your favorite drummer, the one that you look up like, uh, Agad? <laughs> uh, uh, Cosi Powell first, Tommy Aldridge second, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Bonham, of course. Yeah. What's Tommy. the, in your opinion, the best album that was ever released? Wow. It's, uh, it's a hard it's one. <laughs> Uh, it's it's uh, it's difficult to say because if I look in you know for from seventies and eighties, <sighs> it is really difficult to say yeah. because many 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 bands many albums they as I told you they had the chance and to to stay in the studio. I know stories, for example, Black Sabbath when they did Sabotage. They uh, rent Hano uh, the house in the middle of nowhere, and uh, they spend I don't know if like six or seven months alone, and they build the studio inside of a house. So they wake up three o'clock in the night and they say, "Guys, let's go and recording something." So it's you know it's it's different it's different things. It's more. It's I, actually what I think it's uh, an, art, an artist uh, is a real artist life like this. Stay, stay, you know, when you have, uh, for example, uh, you have a time, they told you, oh, you have to do this in one or two days or three days. And, and and then you have to arrange everything. Of course, there is always things that it, at, at the end, when you listen to the result and say, fuck, I'd never be happy, so much happy about that because something was always, you know, missing or or maybe change it. And, and at that time, they had, the, they had the chance to do it. So you can listen to when they did the, for example, um, Wisenake or or all the, the the great album from 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 all you know these these bands, you can really feeling that they spend a lot of time together. Then then and that time they they don't have any you know trick to adjust the things they had to play. Yeah. And this is the thing today. Everyone every everybody can play something. It's easy making with a. With the, you know all the uh, yeah with all the programs you can if you are not a singer you can be on tunes or something and at that time it was not possible I mean if you are a good that time if you were a good uh, singer good otherwise yeah, yeah, yesterday <laughs> I did uh, another interview and we were talking about this singing things that uh, nowadays with the auto tune everybody sounds the same but then if you take off the autotune not everybody is a good singer so it's uh yeah i i i'm not a big fan of autotune but it, you know it's not it's not only about the autotune it's also with the drums for example if you are not really precise there is kind of um application where they can you know just editing the drums right but <laughs> you know everyone has to uh, has to uh, make his own job 
And for me, I think that music is not for everybody. They try to make it for everybody. It's just for business, for music, for, for money. But, you know, I will never be, for example, uh, uh, I don't know, <laughs> something else if I'm not able to do it just because I have somebody that, that can help me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a bit... Uh, nowadays, with, uh, I think that uh, with all this social media, mm -hmm. uh, everyone wants to be some, someone important. Yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah. it doesn't work like this. If you have talent, then, uh, yeah, you deserve it. Yeah. And sometimes those people, uh, very talented people, stay in the in the shadow because uh, they don't care of uh, becoming someone, but they do because, as you say, the art is uh, music is art, and art uh, is uh, something that you love. And when you do something because you love, you don't you don't care about uh, getting. Uh, you know money out of it uh, if it if it comes yeah it's good but it's not the uh the the primary the, the the first goal that you have yeah sure because yeah, when sure. you do something that you love you do because you feel it yeah sure yeah but music is matter of uh, you know uh, emotion and uh if if you don't have that thing and that's things why i don't listen to new music for example I stopped to listen to new music long ago. I don't have this feeling with any bands, new bands, to be honest. Too much uh, over, um, um, how do you say? Um, they used to, they used this, all this program where they adjust everything. Then when you go to see them live, you can see the difference because yeah. they are not able to play like this. Yeah. And this is not things I don't I don't don't understand. I don't understand why people should do something they are not able to do it. Yeah, that's true. Especially in this in this kind of job. I mean, of course, I talk I, I talk, I talk I'm talking about job because it was my job and I got money for that. But but first first things is is passion and is a, a emotional thing. Then when I listen to the really modern drum, the uh, modern uh, music, mo modern metals, I don't have this feeling anymore. And every band sounds exactly the same. It's, I mean, I, maybe I, it's me because I'm a, I'm a boomer or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm staying with my old music. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just thinking about nowadays band. I think there is some that stands out. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, uh, th there is a when when it comes to music, I I love to see live music. I love to listen music in general, but uh, the live performance is uh, what what show what the band is 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 the band uh, good or. And don't forget well, it. And, that, that good. Yeah, and don't forget that even during the live shows, some bands, some bands, uh, uh, you know, use some tricks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I know, I know. I have heard actually that there is also some machine for the for the drummer. I don't. I don't. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't I know, know what, what you're what talking what, about. <laughs> I don't know what it, it is, but uh, yeah, I was like. Uh, what? what I didn't know that there is this thing so for me it was like okay I, I know that there, there were like like a couple of bands using backing tracks like like hundred percent so they don't play at all on stage and they just learning the right parts and then everything is coming from the from the the mp3 or whatever you know uh, <laughs> Well, it's a long, it's a long uh, discussion, you know, because when you do a really long tour and, uh, for example, talking about singer, then sometimes, you know, the, you have to do six shows in, in one week and it happens to me many times. You know, drummer, you know, get tired, but then I go to sleep and the day after I'm okay. 
uh, a singer with a with a vocal string after like three days or four days screaming like like you know an eagle for <laughs> two hours, and you starting having like fifty or sixty. I mean, it's not it, it's not easier to make to make uh, to have the same level you know every day. And then, of course, people start judging. Oh, the singer is not good anymore, and blah blah blah. Or even, even worse, when people talking about, oh, I saw Ronnie James Dio at seventy, I but he's not able to sing anymore. Fuck, he's seventy. So what do you expect that he can sing like what when he was twenty? Come on, be realistic. Yeah, yeah. I For actually example. remember about a Finnish power metal band. Um, someone said, yeah, that the singer is uh, not able to reach I, not anymore. Okay. And then I was like, weird, because I saw last time, I was like, I saw 10 years ago, and he was still good. And okay. then I saw the band this summer, and actually he was singing perfectly like a like before so maybe he had uh, some issue and he was unable to reach the higher also remember to see the same band and the singer was uh with the fever so he said that uh, he was not feeling well so if the if the fans can help in the singing yeah yeah so you never you never know because we are humans, we are not machines. Exactly, we are humans, you know. There is a day then you're feeling well, there is another day where you have a flu or something it happens many times. I, I did a tour when I was uh, a month on tour and I did two weeks with fever and it was no chance to me to get well and then I, because, you know, you, you don't sleep uh, in, in the real couch, you um, sleep not so much on, on the nightliner. You know, it's it's it is is an art job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. I, 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 I smiley when somebody told me, ah, oh, you you did a great life touring. Uh, you see many many places in uh, in around the world. And they said, yeah, well, I I can say that I see a lot of airport hotels and venues. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, you don't have time to see around. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's really I I always think that it's not easy. Also, uh, being on tour for long times, many weeks uh, in a row, it's uh, you are not okay. sleeping in uh, in your uh, bed. Uh, the all the the, the schedule is uh, is different from your daily life normally when you are at home. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, when you are sleeping in a tour tour bus, uh, I think it's not that comfortable. No, absolutely no. So... <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, actually, actually, it's uh, if you. It depends of uh, uh, if you are good on sleeping on sleep. You know that your sleep is really deep. You can sleep. I know many people. They don't have any problem about that. But yeah, for example, I had a couple of problems with my back mm, sleeping there, uh, or even worse, the jet lag between you know when you have to fly states or australia or japan uh the last two we did with primal fear we did uh no it was the first tour that i did with them we did uh north america completely so it was one month playing almost every day then we flew from canada to japan we did three shows in the road and then again uh, we flew to Australia, we did two shows, and then back to Germany again. So we did the completely around of the world, you know. Uh, yeah, I can tell you when I came back home, it took me like more than one month to get, you know, in the right, in the, in the, in the regular time, because my body was completely, you know, I, I was not able to sleep for eight hours or whatever in, during the night. I was sleeping like two hours during the day, four hours during the night. It was, oh, it was really difficult it's hard it's but, hard yeah 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 but you know it's part of a job <laughs> yeah true <laughs> uh talking about uh live music um what was the first band that you saw live the first uh, rock or metal gig i saw uh deep purple in on the um uh, 
Um, that tool was the Regison, Battle Regison, something like that. It was the, the album after um, uh, Perfect Stranger. So Blackmore was still in the band with Michael Schenker supporting them. It was in, um, in Milano, Palato Sardi at that time. And, and I was 12. My father took me there to see the show and was wow. I still remember the, you know, the, 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 the stage and how they, it was just magic. Yeah, yeah, I see. First. You you have great memories and uh, your father was super cool then. <laughs> oh yeah 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 yeah. So yeah taking yeah. you it, there uh, and uh, introducing absolutely. you to to great music. Yeah, absolutely. And then you, when you, I was are, you are a lucky guy. I was I was uh, actually actually I remember even when I went to see uh, the Masters of Rock in uh, 90, 90, one or two. So the headliner were uh, Iron Maiden with Fear of the Dark. At that time, it was in uh, Reggio Emilia. Uh, so, so then Megadeth, we come down to a station tour. Pantera with Cowboys from Hell. No, it was Bulgar Display at that time. Uh, then Black Sabbath reunion with Dio. So it was one of the best yeah. concerts I saw in my life. Wow, what a, what a bill, what a band. Yeah. yeah. Great. historical and yes 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 absolutely huge, huge festival with huge names yeah the yeah. good names also <laughs> yeah yeah you can have a huge name but not really good to be honest yeah yeah that's that's true that's true <laughs> yeah. right exactly but let's get my random topic jar and see what we get to talk about. Let's hope that it's the same. That there are a few that are coming quite a lot and few that uh, never come, not more than few, but let's see, I'm going <laughs> to pick one from this in the middle. Games. Oh, uh, so, games. video games. Games or uh, table games or whatever, oh, video okay. games. Are you into video games? Uh, not 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 anymore i didn't have the time I, I was actually when i was teenager yeah well the first playstation was i was really into that what was uh, the best game for the playstation one? Oh, i did uh for me it was legacy of kane i love it a lot uh tomb raider too uh and then of course i get mad with uh with uh gran turismo yeah GT. yeah i love it a lot and then, but then after that, you know, didn't have, when I start touring, no time, we had, no yeah, time the, anymore. No, yeah, we had the PlayStation on, on, on the nightliner, but yeah, you didn't have the time to do it anyway, because somebody else was playing. <laughs> <laughs> it was always, it, the, the PlayStation was always busy, something they're using for somebody else. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I remember to, when uh, the PlayStation one came out uh, or better, when my brother got the, the PlayStation, and then I was playing. I remember that I was playing with a Taken, Taken 2 okay. or Taken 3. And okay. um, I don't know what I was doing. I was just just <laughs> pushing everything <laughs> because I was I have to kill the, the other one. I have yeah, to yeah. win. And then um, the other, uh, well, there was a Spyro. Spyro, wow, yeah. Crash Bandicoot. Crash uh, was uh, a big thing. Then there was... Uh, um metal gear solid wow i love it metal gear I love that, it. that was like still thinking it <laughs> it gives me anxiety somehow <laughs> when you try to 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 uh, hide in the bar in the box uh, yeah yeah waiting that uh, someone is uh, walking by uh that was that was something <laughs> it's true yeah you know it was the first time that you can have a good for that time, a good quality uh, games. I remember when I was playing the first time Resident Evil, it was wow. I said, wow, I was scared. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really nice. And then Today, there was, uh, okay. you know, there was those um, um, journal, those magazine about PlayStation, and you all, always had uh, some demos. And yeah, they I were remember. So I remember yeah. that. To play, I remember to play with the 
Busta Grove, you had to dance and mm -hmm. it was so difficult. <laughs> and then there was the, I don't remember the name of the game, but there was this ball and you had to, to do things, uh, to jump. Uh, the, the, you were the ball. I don't, oh, I don't know the I game. I remember something like that, but I, I, I can't remember the name. Yeah, and if oh. you went a bit uh, uh, on the on the side, you were falling in the in the sky. I don't know where what it was, but I I don't remember the name. It it was yeah, quite... but I remember the game actually. Yeah. Now that you're ta talking about, I I remember the game. <laughs> yeah. Then I don't know. What, was it? Uh, I think that uh, was the Sega Mega System when there was the Michael Jackson game. That uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> you had to just do the Michael Jackson move to open the door and save children. I d <laughs> I don't know what was that. And then there was another one that I really was into. It was the Sailor Moon, and I think it <laughs> it, it it was interesting. It was not easy. <laughs> and then yeah, the, yeah. every time that it was the most difficult part, I was uh, giving to my brother to finish the. The, <laughs> the hard part <laughs> yeah yeah, oh, yeah but... but yeah i don't i don't play games anymore my my kid my my son he loves gran turismo and he's uh into that things but yeah I, i'm not doing it anymore yeah yeah and what about table games do you like those Oh yeah, I was even at that time when I was kids. I was playing, you know, um, you know a football uh, table or or a uh, ping pong, whatever. Yeah. But I never been so good at that things. So I was there playing with with friends just to you know yeah, to, to have, have fun. Day with friends. <laughs> you know, I I I love all those uh, kind of games like uh, ping pong uh, and uh, then the. I like pool, to be honest. I like, I yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I like um, it too. But, uh, uh, but I, 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 I'm like, I'm not good. So I, if I go to play, I want to play with someone that just want to have fun. That is not like we have to win. <laughs> yeah, because they get then mad. I, I, I'm not into that. I, I like to have fun. A game is a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to do like something like that, you can play bullying. Bullying is good for everybody. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you are good or not. It's just to have a fun. Yeah, true. Oh well, yeah. there is also the professional way to play bullying. Absolutely. The, Absolutely. The, 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 the I remember people when when I went on the Saturday when I was in Italy and to play mm -hmm. bullying, and then sometimes you saw those people uh, dressed with their their bullying. Uh, dressing code and uh, with uh, all their fancy balls, so uh, that they were like. It was interesting to watching because they were good and they was like a yeah. throwing whatever it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's a it's it's a thing that games are made to be fun. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> but let's get another another that topic. Let's see what we get. This one again. I think that this one is coming. I I will take a few of those away because I'm get tired of talking always about the same things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's school. So school. School. Uh did you like school when you were a kid? Uh well <laughs> <laughs> not 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 really not really but yeah yeah it was more because when um I have uh I had, you know, um, in the middle school, my village at that time was, um, it was a village where many uh, mafia family were moved from Sicily okay. to there. And uh, so I had to end up with, with a lot of, you know, not really good person. And um, it wasn't good time for me. Uh, then I changed it on the second second years of, of middle school, uh, and uh, I moved to the college. It was the it was the time where I start playing drums actually, and then then was great. Then was great, and then after that I, I moved to Switzerland and I did uh, four years as a blacksmith 
is the guy that's working with uh, irons, you know. Yes. Still. And uh, it was nice because we did, um, we used to do like one day or two days of school and then the other day we used to work. So then, you know, you can practice practice what you are learning yeah yeah and uh so it's uh, it, it was a really good school really professional and then i learned a lot and then after that of course i i start playing so it's uh and the, the best school that i did in my life it was uh, you know dvd watching my heroes play drums yeah <laughs> it's is the is the way that i learned playing drums yeah, yeah. And um, what was your favorite uh, class uh, when you were in school, if you think? Uh, for example, I was into everything that was uh, related with art. So art, music, uh, poetry, and then there was a physical activity. Th those were my th the classes that I was good in and I... I enjoyed. <laughs> I was good, uh, of course, in music at that time. <laughs> I was like uh, good in paint, uh, in uh, in in uh, Italian. Uh, not really good, you know. Make make calculation, uh, mathematics stuff. You know, I'm not yeah. that good at that. Uh, yeah, physics. Yeah, you know, gym was okay uh but yeah i think the best was it was music for me <laughs> yeah yeah and what yeah. was the worst was it a mat oh uh, it's a story for example uh <laughs> uh science it was also really difficult you know learn all the things you know and then and then it actually become really easy when you grown up because then you see them you understand it but it for example, the things that I never understood in my life is uh, learn religion in, in the school when you are a kid, because it doesn't make any sense. You don't understand. Even a, a, an adult don't understand many things that we have in our in our uh, religion. And then I don't get it. Why, why, you know, some little boy and girl that has to, to learning something about something that is really difficult to explain. Yeah. Yeah. It, it I confused the people. Yeah, I remember that uh, uh you know in the elementary school I was doing the religion I was following the religion class uh we had uh, really um except from the first year that we had uh what's the uh, noon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh that she she was really I don't know she was um, kind of aggressive in, in her way of explain things. Also, she throw uh, shows to a kid <laughs> because he was uh, not uh, listening. He was a bit mm -hmm. wild and she mm -hmm. throw. So this, this is about the church things. <laughs> and, uh, but then uh, on the, from the second year, we had uh, a teacher and she was so nice. Uh, actually, I don't remember anything about what, <laughs> because I was in my ward. I was always in my ward at school. So teachers were saying like, did you understand? And I was just doing like this, but I don't yeah, know yeah. what they were talking <laughs> about. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. But yeah, religion, is, then at this, uh, when I went to the secondary school, it's media. So, uh, I did not do the religion anymore. Yeah. I just was doing other other things in that in that hour. Yeah. Right. But let's talk about pizza. Uh, do you like pizza? Of course I do. <laughs> what a stupid question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> Who doesn't? I mean, pizza it's 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 the the most uh uh, easy uh, food that you can find almost everywhere. That, of course, good or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, but pizza is like Nutella, you know? Nutella is everywhere. Pizza is everywhere. So True. true. Uh, what's your favorite pizza? 
Oh, well, uh, I like a lot, for example, tuna and onions. But I'm not taking, uh, you know, all the time because I know that some friends or some people that are close to me, they don't like the smell. The, <laughs> the after smell. <laughs> Uh, but I like even even uh, with uh, pepper. So then it's opposite to what we're talking about in Italy. You know, in Italy we said we said uh, diavola. Actually, it's uh, with, uh, with salami and pepper is a different thing. With salami, for them it's pepper, and for us is is salami. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I like a spicy spicy and, uh, pepper a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, where did you eat the best pizza ever? In my original country, in a country place, is actually Naples. Uh, Naples. Yeah. I'm, I'm also from Naples, so I know pretty well how they do the pizza there. Yeah. And uh, where did you eat the worst pizza? Oh, well, uh, in many places. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, you know, in, 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 not in Italy, outside of Italy. Yeah. But even yeah. in Italy, we, we have many really worst or bad pizzeria here and there, especially if you see that the guy that behind is maybe it's Turkish guy or something like that making everything or or Chinese guy that is doing Italian kitchen, the Chinese kitchen, pizza. <laughs> so they, they do everything. Yeah. I can do, you know, something really good. Yeah, like let's see. And then let's go to the, the most important question uh, about this interview. Uh, mm -hmm. Does Pineapple belong to pizza? No, no way. <laughs> no, I'm sorry for the people that love it. But for me, you know, it's something that is really, when I saw the first time the, the, the Hawaii pizza, they call it, with a pineapple and ham or whatever, I said, what the fuck is that? Is it neither one? I try. I, actually, I try. I, I, I force myself to say, okay, I want to try it. And of course, I was completely right to say that it was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Not so. fruit on the pizza. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, actually, uh, we we have some other pizza like they used to uh, to use blue cheese, gorgonzola cheese with uh, with uh, um, apple. Yeah, you know? I have heard actually uh, under one of my interviews. Uh, there is a comment that say about this pizza yeah yeah it's true i saw that too at the time but of course it, for me it's the same things i mean it, it in my in my taste it's difficult to mix it up you know uh, sweet stuff with with salty stuff and it, it it's hard for me to accept yeah i <laughs> agree i completely agree and i'm like if it's in if it's not on my pizza fine but uh, yeah i'm yeah I, I see fruits like a dessert part, not like a main, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we have done with this interview. Thank you so much yeah. to be my guest. It was really a pleasure to talk with you. You had a lot of great stories. Yeah, uh, thank you too for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, would you like to say something uh, to people that are watching this interview? Oh, well, so... I would love to say that it will be really nice that everyone try to um, support music, but not supporting, you know, like uh, uh, using Spotify or these things. Artists needs a lot of things, a lot of time and money to make an album. And when, uh, when you got everything in 10 euros and you think, the job that an artist doing between writing, producing, uh, recording, uh, photo shooting, video shooting, and uh, you know, this costs a lot of money. And if you want to have quality in the music, we need to find a way to make it, and we need to find to make that the way that musician and bands get enough to make a, a quality music, a quality a quality job. That's the things. Then unfortunately in our days, it's difficult. Only huge band can do it. Cool. But 
supporting metal, supporting, listen to music. Your music is always, you know, the the best things you can have. A life without music will be really sad, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you.